Hey guys, it's Austin the Car Guy coming at you with another video today. I have the Explore ST. Hope you guys enjoy it. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to go check out the channel. This is my new car, used car walk around, tech talks, and eventually we're going to end up doing some car shows. So make sure that you guys subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you get notified when I have a new video. And of course, let's get into it for you guys. So before we get started, I do want to quickly go over what the Explore ST is for those of you that aren't familiar. The Explore ST is the sportiest, fastest, three row that Ford could build for us um, now this is a really cool chassis because the Explorer now in its fifth generation uh, kind of had to do some restructuring and what I mean by restructuring is that they built the fourth generation which I'll put on screen right now and that vehicle was eh, I mean it sold decent but consumers weren't fully satisfied with the vehicle and more importantly, the police, the number one buyer of that vehicle, were not satisfied, which means they weren't buying as many of them. And Ford, one of their secrets to selling just a buttload of vehicles is commercial buyers, commercial applications, fleet buyers, people who are going to buy 50, 100, 100 or something, your police departments, your schools, your electric companies, pretty much anybody who's going to buy a lot of a vehicle. Well, the police did not like the front-wheel drive vehicle. They did not like the powertrain. And so Ford went back to the drawing board with the Explorer, and they came out with this. And this thing looks mean as hell in comparison to the old body style. It is just angry. And they had to change the format. It went from being a front-wheel drive unibody to being a rear-wheel drive unibody, uh, kind of taking a lot of design cues and elements from the Dodge Durango, its main competitor that police were flocking to. Uh, to buy that and of course the Tahoe which you see a lot of police using but yeah this was to earn back that police business for Ford and I think it succeeded because this ST variant makes over 400 horsepower to all four wheels and is lightning quick now one of the downsides of this SUV when comparing it to something like a Chevy Traverse or maybe a Honda Pilot um, or even the Toyota Highlander especially now the Grand Highlander is going to be the third row and cargo uh, capacity behind that third row this vehicle only holds six it's going to have captain's chairs in the second row and two seats in the third row so while others can hold seven and un upwards to eight this one's going to struggle now with that being said this is still an amazing suv to buy because well what else is going to be real drive and super fun to drive before we get inside and I show you all those six seats and all of the great performance stuff this vehicle has, let me just give you a quick walk around on the outside. So these headlights, they swoop around in this cool kind of shape, cornering off the vehicle, but they also look really good. You notice the grill is almost a V-Motion grill from another type of brand. You'll notice the Ford logo. There is a 360 cam Explorer spelled out across the hood, which didn't show up until that infamous fourth generation Explorer, but this one still holds on to it and it looks pretty good doing it there's your st line badge letting you know that yes you got the sporty fast fun one and you'll notice the fog lights down below we do have sonar parking sensors we do have a front license plate bracket and a very low slung factory painted bumper there you'll notice with our tires these are your perillion scorpions zero all seasons as far as sizing goes these ones are in a 275 millimeter by 45 millimeter on an R21 rim. So that's a 21 inch wheel right there. You'll notice the nice big brakes inside. Sorry, they're a little rusty. It's been on the lot. You can see Explore stamped right into the lower door right here. Just letting you know what you got. Same tires that we, oh, actually are they the same? Let's check them out. So these are 275, 45 R21s. Yep, same tires, they are squared so you can't rotate them, thank goodness. Some BMWs and Audis and Mercedes do not have square tire formats. They're wider in the back. They're what's called staggered. Makes it a little more difficult when you go to rotate or buy tires. Looking at the rear, you got nice big taillights here that are LED. They say Explore right there along the back. And then of course we do have another ST line badge right down here in the bottom corner. We do have four exhaust tips on the back here, which look really good. We do have ultrasonic parking sensors. And of course, this one's equipped with a tow hitch. This can tow up to 5,600 pounds, I believe. I'll put the correct answer on screen somewhere right around here. But yeah, looks pretty good. Let's open up the back. Uh, this might be in dealer mode, so the power lift gate may or may not work. We'll find out. Ooh, little arrow letting you know this is the button. Oh, look at that. The power lift gate works. Thank goodness. All right, so talking about our rear cargo area. Well, this is what it looks like overall. 
getting inside as far as storage goes. You've got a little nook here, little nook here. You've got buttons for these seats, LED light, a 12 volt. Looks like some tie downs. The seat lifts up. Oh, floor lifts up. Oh, okay. So there you go. There's your cargo area. Let's see how these seats fold. All right, well, a very non-dramatic affair. The old fourth generation Explorer had these weird, they would fold flat and then swing back and kind of tuck into this whole area here and then that would be open. It was kind of a weird design. This one I like a lot better, seems to be a lot more functional. We do have flip up headrests, which I'll flip up. And yes, I am going to climb into the third row of this for you guys, you're welcome. You can close and lock. You can also set an adjustable height by holding it uh, in case that's too tall for you on its stock height. But yeah, there's your rear cargo area. Let's go climb into the third row so climbing back here first place we'll go right here Ooh. all right so it is a tip and slide seat that's about as far as we're gonna get it to tip and slide but we do have some steps let's see if we can't get in here all right and we're gonna go just right over here to the passenger side because i don't know if it's worth it to try and close this in as far as room goes there's your feet I guess when the seat is back, you can go like that, make it a little more comfortable for one of your legs. We don't really have anywhere for an armrest or a cup holder or a USB port. Uh, oh, hold up. I lied. We do have a cup holder right down here. Another little storage area. Storage up in the window seal. The window helps. We do have an air vent and a light back in this third row. So not super, super comfortable, but not... Uh, I would say this is reserved for younger children. Maybe don't put any adults back here for an extended period of time, that is. I might do it for 10, 15 minutes. You know, if we just had to drive across town real quick and grab something, I could I could probably get away with that. But yeah, you can see in the back we've got heated seats. We do have a tri-zone climate system, so this rear zone is a separate zone. We do have a panoramic sunroof in this one, which will open up when we get up to the front seats. Talking about the seven ro second row, these do slide. They do have latch nice and accessible at the bottom. Um, they do have an armrest on them. They do recline. Climbing in here, we got the iconic Ford toddler cup holder, which I love. This one has window shades, which I also love. An air vent, coat hook, another light. With that panel roof, it's nice. Reclining the seat makes it more comfortable. Uh, pockets on each of the seat backs. Flip down cup holders here in the middle. We've got two USB-Cs and a 150 watt house plug. So you can charge a phone, a tablet, a laptop, whatever you may need. Overall though, not a terrible second row. Very, very usable. Let me give you a quick shot of the front seats, what they look like. And let's go ahead up there next. First, before we do that, I wanna quickly go over the window sticker, all the pricing, equipment, options, packages that are on this one. So here we are, this is our 2023 Explorer, Explorer ST line. Ooh, let's see if I can get that camera to focus for you guys. Four-wheel drive, three-liter V6, standard equipment in this box right here. There you go. As far as exterior color goes, this is the agate black metallic. Black leather interior. Optional packages there. And a grand total MSRP of 61,510. EPA rates it at 24 highway, 18 city, 20 combined and five-star safety rating overall. So there's all your total information on this Ford Explorer ST. Let's go ahead inside the driver's seat now and see what you guys think of that. This does have passive entry, so you can leave the key in your pocket, lock and unlock. There is blind spot monitoring on the mirror. Looking at the door panel overall, it is a very nice door panel. Gives you some leather accent or uh, metallic kind of steel accents up at the top. We do have the memory seats. They are tri-zone memory with our Lock unlock features, Bang & Olsen sound system, white leather stitching everywhere, piano black on the door. We do have our power mirrors, power windows, door handle up top, storage down below. It does say Ford Performance on the transom as we're going into the vehicle, which is really nice. And then when you look at the seat, it is a power seat with power lumbar, basic pedals, exterior lighting interior lighting next to it so you can control the brightness of everything and just looking at these seats i mean overall they're really nice seats they've got st line or st embroidered right into them they are heated and cooled let's climb inside let me start it up for you 
Here's what our key fob looks like. You can see it's a pretty basic Ford key fob, but it does have a nice feature when we flip it over. <laughs> it's got the ST line badge right on it, along with on the steering wheel. So push foot on the brake, start button. The start button's kind of tucked away up here in the dash a little awkwardly. Wait for all the beeping to get over. All right, so here's our digital gauge cluster. You can see it's pretty nice. We can toggle through, see all the different modes. Let me turn the fan speed down so you guys can actually hear me. There we go. But yeah, overall, really nice digital gauge cluster. You can uh, select screens. We got a calm screen option. Got trips, off-road status, intelligent four-wheel drive, trailer light check if you're towing, seat belts, auto start stop see the intelligent four-wheel drive because I'm interested to know if it shows where it's putting the power down there it is so yeah it will indeed tell you where it's putting the power down looking at the steering wheel it is a little bit of an older style Ford steering wheel but it's still very very nice really high quality stitching nice thick bezels along it it is flat bottomed at this ST bottom which is nice overall really nice steering wheel do have paddle shifters on the back of it as well you can see our and then of course our wiper stock. And of course we have our turn signal stock over here with our lane keep on the end. Big vertical screen in the middle here which has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is not the newer cloud-based nav. Um, which is a little interesting that this isn't the newest up-to-date radio. I wish they would put Sync 4 in here, but I guess we'll have to deal with it for now. Uh, the nice part about Sync 4 is the games. I think in a vehicle like this, a three row, the games would be great. We do have carbon fiber on the dash here, which is really nice and handy. Below that, we do have a volume knob and a tuning knob, as well as our climate controls. Like I said, three zones of climate, heated and cooled front seats with a heated steering wheel. Opening that up, you can see we've got our USB-C, USB-A, and another 12 volt. We do have two cup holders, your shifter for your automatic transmission, auto brake hold, different drive modes. Let me turn this dial and show you the different drive modes. We've got normal. We got Eco, we got Sport, Tow Haul, there's Eco, interesting I didn't do that last time, Slippery, Trail, and then Deep Sand slash Snow. So pretty cool different drive modes that this vehicle has. Auto start stop buttons next to that, hill descent controls next to that, and then a wireless charger right here on the back. Opening this up, you can see our center console with our 12 volt and our glove box over here. Up top, we have our home link garage door opener with a microphone behind that. Flipping this down, this with lights. Hello, y'all. And we'll open this right side is for the shade, left side's for the glass. You got interior lights, all the interior lights with the doors, of course passenger airbag on off putting this down with lights we do have sunglass holder and there is your nice big panoramic sunroof fully opened up and of course you can close that down just as easily let's go look underneath the hood of this vehicle next because i think that's where you guys are going to be most interested on the explorer st line due to the fact that it's so sporty with so much power for performance Alrighty, so here we are. You can see we've got a nice big strut tower connector there, stiffening the chassis on here. This is a 3 liter inline 6 paired with the 10 speed automatic. It does have your washer fluid right there, PCM or ECM, whatever it is. It's built by Bosch right there. Don't know if you can see the little Bosch logo on the corner. Uh, air intake slash air filter right up front, coolant reservoir right there, oil dipstick right there, right on the side of the motor oil fill kind of tucked underneath this bar. I'm sure that's super fun to change oil on. Uh, and kind of a blank spot over here. What I'm really looking for right now is the battery. I wonder if it's underneath the back seats or something weird like that. Oh well, I'll ask a Ford tech. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope you have enjoyed my detailed tour of this uh, Ford Explorer ST. If I missed anything, make sure to leave it down in the comments. If you guys like the way this vehicle looks, leave it down in the comments. And if there's something you want Ford to update, also leave that down in the comments and let us know. Uh, overall, would you spend the $61,000 that Ford recommends that you buy this vehicle for? 
let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a beautiful day. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps me. The long-term goal of going to every single car show. So please help out with that. And uh, for those of you late video lighting nerds, let's get these lights a popping. Uh, regular lights, no high beams, fog lights. All right, there we go. We got our fog lights and our headlights on. Let's see what they look like. So there's your regular low beam headlight with your LED daytime running light along the top. Oh, we do have our fog light down below that right there. Let's go test out the high beam next. There's our high beam now. And let's see what they look like. Oh yeah, there's our high beams. Bright AF. No fog lights on, of course. Let's go check out the tail lights real quick. Very nice. See them flashing there, which means they're real LEDs. They didn't fake us out like they did on the Super Duty over there. That was rude as hell, Ford. Anyway, thanks for watching for real now, guys. Have a great day. <laughs>